Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And welcome as we come together to celebrate the beginning of the church's year on this first Sunday of Advent. As we start our Eucharist this morning, let's bow our heads and pray, asking the Lord to bless this wreath which accompanies us, journeys with us as we wait for the coming of Christ at Christmas. Lord our God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. We ask that you pour forth your blessing upon this, our Advent wreath. May the light of these candles reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so we come before the Lord, knowing that we do not always live enlightened lives and allow the light of Christ to shine through us. And so let's ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, Lord have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring forth for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell securely, and this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble he teaches his way. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All the Lord's paths are mercy and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and commands, the Lord's secret is for those who fear him. 
to them he reveals his covenant. To, to you, O Lord, Lord, I lift, lift up my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Finally, we beg and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you learned from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, in perplexity, at the roaring of the seas and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, Look up and raise your hands, because your redemption is drawing near. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that the day come upon you suddenly like a snare, for it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times, praying to have strength, to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A few days ago, I saw a quote on social media, and it said this, Patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to to keep a good attitude while waiting. I wonder what you are waiting for as we begin the season of Advent, because Advent is described as a season of waiting, of anticipating, of looking forward, of hoping. I suspect that we find it, or at least maybe this is autobiographical, quite difficult to wait. And in a paradoxical way, that is a lesson that we have to learn. It is the hard way that I have to learn. And maybe the COVID pandemic, if it had any benefits, did teach us something about slowing down and waiting. We live very busy lives, and often we think of waiting as something which is a problem, a frustration. Maybe we even think it is about doing nothing, wasting time. And yet, at the very heart of the season of Advent, we're invited to wait. In Luke's Gospel on this first Sunday of Advent, Jesus reminds us how easy it is for us to get lost in the busyness of life. In one translation, it's quite stark. He says, beware that your hearts do not become drowsy 
Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy and the day catch you out like a surprise. I suspect if we do not stop intentionally and learn how to wait as Advent invites us to, it will easily seem that these weeks before Christmas just disappear and Advent itself becomes a completely non-event in our lives. In fact, I suspect that for many of us, Lent is the event and Advent is the non-event. And yet the church invites us to, at the beginning of this liturgical year, take a step back and to look at the bigger picture, take a breath and to see things differently. In contrast to the busy world around us and the Christmas carols in malls weeks before Christmas, the church in the season of Advent invites us to intentionally learn how to wait, to train ourselves to wait patiently, waiting not in frustration or irritation or anxiety or fear, but in joyful anticipation and hope. You see, our waiting, our spiritual waiting, is not passive. It's not something that puts us into doing nothing, wasting time. But rather, the kind of waiting we are talking about is an active waiting. Because we are waiting on the Lord himself who is always at work and always creating something new. I want to suggest that there are three things that we can do intentionally as we enter into this time of Advent, things that could help us in our waiting. And the first is just simply to find in the next day or two a quiet time where you can become aware of what it is that you are waiting for at this moment in your life. And this could be anything. Maybe on a surface level, You're waiting for your 13th check. Maybe you're waiting for something that you've been praying for. Maybe you're waiting to see someone at Christmas that you have not seen for a long time, a family member or a friend. Maybe you're waiting for the birth of a baby. Simply take some time quietly to become aware of what it is that you are longing for, what your heart is waiting for at this moment. I think the second invitation is that Advent invites us to look at our priorities. St. Paul, in that reading we heard, the second reading in his letter to the Thessalonians, reminds us of what should be at the center of, of our lives if we are going to be Christ followers. He says, Brothers and sisters, may the Lord increase and abound, help you to increase and abound in love for one another, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord with all his holy ones. The priority of every Christ follower should be to grow always in love and holiness. And it might be good to sit down in these opening days of Advent and just simply make a note of your priorities. This will give you insight into yourself and the trajectory that your life is on. Because our priorities speak about what is important to us. They speak about the things that we are most likely to do. And the third thing I think we're invited to do after naming what we are waiting for and simply listing our priorities is to look at our lives through the lens of the gospel. Jesus exhorts us to be alert, to be awake, 
to be aware so that we can hear more clearly what God is saying. And I want to suggest today that the opposite of being awake and alert is not being asleep, but rather it is living awake in a false reality. You know, we spend time dreaming, dreaming about what we would do if we had more resources or dreaming about a certain lifestyle. And it is perhaps while we spend time on these if-onlys that the Lord passes us by and we miss opportunities to encounter God. We might ask, do the longings of my heart, that which I am waiting for, and the priorities that I have, open me up to notice how God is at work, but not just at work, but seeking to encounter me. You see, God desperately wants to encounter us in the reality of our lives, in the longings of our hearts, in the priorities that we hold dear. Does God really inhabit my longings and my priorities? Or are they all about me and what I want? And so how will you make this Advent different? How will you make this Advent count? What are you really longing for? What do your priorities say about the quality of your waiting for the day of the Lord? So let's join together now in making a profession of faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord our God, we give you thanks for this season of Advent. And in the midst of our gratitude, we bring to you now what we need so that we may truly live this season with the fullness and the generosity that we can. For the whole church, that we may be fully engaged in the task Christ has entrusted to us and show our engagement by making sure that we remain awake and alert for the coming of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those in government and all who exercise authority, that they may be guided to work for the common good, especially for the powerless and the voiceless in our society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our community gathered online, that the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love, and that Advent may constantly remind us to prioritize for the coming of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For refugees, migrants, and outcasts, that they may receive food, shelter, and a generous welcome in their time of need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the bereaved and for all who are sick or suffering in any way, that Christ's love for them will bring them comfort and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's take a moment now to bring 
our own lives before the Lord and our needs, especially those in this time of Advent. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you, those we have spoken out loud, but the prayer too that rests within the heart of each one of us, wherever we may be. And we bring them to you through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This is the God of earth. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, 
by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse most chaste, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's join together now in praying the prayer that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. And so we say, Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's perhaps take time now to pray for peace in our own hearts, in our families, especially during this time of Advent, our communities, our country, and in all those places of the world where there is no peace. Lamb of God, you You take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world, How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that you, who now rejoice with devotion at our Redeemer's coming in the flesh, may be endowed with a rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.